It was Hobbs's mailbox. There was a note hanging out. For a second, I debated the morality of mail snooping. It was a short debate, and I won. I decided to open the letter. Dear Mr. Hobbs, due to previous incidents, we are writing to inform you that we will no longer be sending models to your address. It went on to discuss Hobbs's temper and other alleged infractions, some of which still carry the death sentence in certain less sophisticated cultures. Interesting. This could come in useful. Slasha. I popped open the van's hood. I decided to leave the handbrake alone. The engine was held together by rust and dirt. Everything was covered in a sticky film of dirty black oil. Half the wiring wasn't connected to anything. It was the van battery. A bundle of wires came into the engine bay from the dashboard. Many of the wires seemed to lead nowhere. It was one of two horns in the van. It didn't seem to be connected to anything else under the hood. Two wires hung loose from it. It was one of two horns in the van. It didn't seem to be connected to anything else under the hood. It was the van's engine. I didn't really have any reason to sabotage it. engine bay was a mess. A bundle of short severed wires was connected to the battery. None of the wires were connected to anything. A loose wire hung from the right hand horn. A loose wire hung from the horn. If I had some spare cable, I could connect it to the other horn. A loose wire hung from the horn. If I had some spare cable, I could connect it to the other horn. Piles of junk, mostly boxes of old paints and scraps of picture frames. Mixed in were wires, cardboard, and some dubious looking old clothes.
George Stobart. Ah, Monsieur Stobart. I trust you have obeyed my instructions not to leave Paris. Of course, Inspector. Good. You clearly know which side your cookie is buttered. Now, I require your presence tomorrow at the murder scene for a reconstruction. I see. Twelve o'clock sharp, Monsieur. Or, as you would say, high noon. Hey, sure. Any failure to comply, and I shall have you extraordinarily rendered. Have a nice day now. And you. That was Nave. We're required back at the gallery tomorrow for a crime scene reconstruction. Let me guess. Non-attendance is a criminal offense? You got it. I had found just what I needed. Two lengths of wire. I snipped the wire in half. The wire was just long enough to connect the battery to the horn. I connected the wires from the cab to the horn. Everything was wired up. The horn had power. The large dumpster was full of garbage. I figured that should get Hobbs' attention. All right, hold your blooming horses. What are you up to with my van? Hello there. Uh, we fixed your horn. So I hear. Now what are you doing in my yard? Are you Wilf Hobbs, the renowned restorer? I might be, and I might not. You never heard of a telephone? I'm busy. Now hop it. Well, that could have gone better. He's not exactly the friendliest of characters. I decided to give it another blast. For crying out loud, will you leave my van alone? Sorry, uh, just need a quick word, Mr. Hobbs. Afternoon, Mr. Hobbs. We're from the model agency. About blooming time. I'm on a deadline. You better come up.
About time you two showed up. Hello, Mr. Hobbs. I was just wondering if... Ah, 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 can it, Goldilocks? I don't have time for chit-chat. Just get undressed behind that screen. Undressed? That was the deal. An extra twenty quid, cos I need you with your kit off. The studio was freezing. And as for you, darling, no need to get undressed. I've got a vivid imagination, so I'll just use that. Either way, just go sit over there on that rug and give me your best belly pock floozy. That's perfect. Just hold it there. Nico made for a good distraction. I just needed to figure out how to get a look inside that portfolio. A variety of liquor bottles, all empty. Hey, I'm still drinking that. Wow, an old Boffson Wang stereo. I hadn't seen one of those for years. Hobbs seemed to have a thing for 70s psychedelic jams. Burroughs, Dick, Rand. Hmm. Hobbs liked his literature heavy and paranoid. The record had stopped. It was Jasmine Breeze by the Hairy Lobsters. I turned the volume up a few notches. I turned the volume down again. I turned the volume up a few notches. I didn't want to play around with the negligee. Those days are long gone. But I wondered who it did belong to. My, my! If it isn't George Stobart! Lady Piermont! Oh, my! You're... Naked? Of course! As an artist's muse, one often finds oneself on Belotas. Now, George, don't be shy. Come here and give me a big hug. That day was the day the night music began. Trapped, smothered, choking on lavender. Uh, George, darling, pass me my robe. It's terribly cold in here. Oi, what are you doing with a blooming robe on? God help me, but you're supposed to be naked. I've got a deadline to meet. Well, you won't be meeting any deadlines with manners like that. And besides, it's freezing in here. Lady Piermont and I had met before. She was larger than life in every way. I wasn't going to mess around with that wiring. I didn't need to sit. It was time for action. Hey! Leave that dial alone. The heating gobbles up all the power and the circuits can't take it. Sorry. I turned the thermostat down again.
Lady Piermont. Oh, George, be a darling and sort the heating out in here. I'll see what I can do. <laughs> 